Hello all, in this video we will see various asymptotic notations which are used to do denote the complexity of different algorithms. In the previous uh, videos you might have seen me writing uh, the complexity like order of n square like this and all this and that. So this order of this O is actually an asymptotic notation named as big O. There are a few more, a few more asymptotic notations and we will familiarize with all of them in this video so uh, basically the word asymptotic means uh, roughly about that is uh, we are measuring the performance of an algorithm roughly that is not the exact measurement of performance still we will get an uh, estimate of the uh, amount of time an algorithm takes to run to its completion uh, I mean, and those uh, complexities are denoted using this kind of uh, notations. So the main asymptotic notations are we will see all of the asymptotic notations. The main asymptotic notations that we use are big O. Uh, we will write uh, the letter O to denote it. The second one is big omega. We will be using the symbol on symbol in physics to denote it. Next is theta denoted by the symbol. Now we have little o denoted by the small letter o and little omega. So these are the complexity notations that will be seen in this video. So you will see one by one. See big omega first. The definition is f of n is equal to big omega of g of n if there exist two positive constants c and n0 such that f of n greater than or equal to c into g of n for all values of n greater than some n0. Okay. So just by seeing this definition I know that it is not that easy to understand what it says. So we will see an example right away and we will explain this after that. Okay. So uh, for f of n I am taking 3n plus 2. This is actually the frequency count obtained for some program. Uh, if you don't know what exactly is the frequency count, please refer to one of my previous videos in which I have explained the frequency counts. Okay. So g of n is, I am taking g of n as n. g of n is any function on n. So I am taking n. Now um, if I want to write f of n that is 3n plus 2 as big O omega of g of n which is n I want to meet this condition that is f of n greater than or equal to g of n that is 3n plus 2 greater than or equal to c into g of n and to write this I have to find these two positive constants c and n0 such that this inequality will hold ok so for c I am taking the value 1 so it can be any positive constant you can take any value I am taking 1 ok so 3n plus 2 greater than or equal to c1 into g of n okay so 1 into g of n which is 1 into n okay c into n here and n n this is 1 into n okay now when uh, now we have to find the minimum value of n for which this inequality holds so when i am applying n as 1 this is 3 plus 2 5 so this is simply 1 so 5 is greater than 1 and that is fine when n is taken as 2 this is 3 into 2 6 plus 2 8 and this is 1 into 2 2 so this is always greater than this so n is n0 is actually 1 that is n0 is the minimum value of n for which the inequality also n0 is 1 so as given in the definition I can say that f of n is big omega of g of n that is 3n plus 2 is big omega of n if there exist two positive constants yes there exist two positive constants c is equal to 1 and n0 is equal to 1 such that f of n is greater than c into g of n yes f of n is greater than this g in g c into g of n for all values of n0 for all values of n greater than 1 so this inequality holds and I can say that 3n plus 2 is big omega of n. Okay. See now you may see that f of n 
is greater than c into g of n that is the value of f of n is always greater than c into g of n this is your frequency count okay the complex your frequency count will be always greater than this uh, function of n that is g of n is the minimum value or lower bound on your function this is the minimum value that your algorithm can take that can get so this is actually the best case that is big omega gives you the best case complexity of an algorithm um, i have explained best case worst case and average case complexity in the previous video please should refer to that if you don't know it has been explained with the help of examples so uh, g of n is always less than f of n meaning that g of n is a lower bound in other words big omega give you the minimum complexity or the best case complexity this is the minimum time your algorithm can take to run to its con con completion not less than that okay now if you are picturizing this is a graph to show the growth of functions you can plot input size n on x axis and you have time on y axis okay now if you are drawing the growth curve it will be something like this so this is your n0 beyond this value f of n is always f of n is always greater than c into g of n isn't it that is beyond n0 f of n is always greater than c into g of n that is what exactly the inequality is this is the input size as i told you and this is why i told you in my previous video that all the complexity notations and asymptotic analysis is applied to input size large that is it is applicable when the input size is large that is you can't compare two algorithms giving very small input size to both of them all this is some dotic notations and complexity analysis holds when the input size is pretty big okay so before this input size the input and the input size is very small that is it is less than n0 and this inequality doesn't hold but after n0 this inequality always holds so asymptotic notations are applicable when the input size is large so we will see one more example so that you can get it better so i'm taking f of n as 3n square plus 2 and g of n as n square now if i want to write f of n that is f of n is big o of n square i want to get c and n zero such that 3n square plus 2 is greater than sorry greater than or equal to some c into n square i am taking c as one because that is a uh, safe choice and very easy to give find a solution to this inequality so i am taking c as one so 1 n square so even when n is equal to 1 this is 3 n square that is 3 plus 2 5 and it is greater than n square so this inequality will hold always so c is equal to 1 and n0 is equal to 1 you can take any value for c but you should take the minimum value for n0 okay that satisfy the inequality so uh, this is how you find now you may be feeling that even if g of n is simply n this inequality will be right that is this is n square instead of n square this is n and 3n square plus 2 is always greater than c into n this is also n then you might be ask you might be thinking what wrong with writing 3n square plus 2 is omega of n no you should always be finding the inequality is greater than or equal to you should be always find be finding the maximum a uh, power function of n which satisfy this inequality that is the maximum power function power function of n which satisfy this inequality is n square so you have to take n square not n okay because this is a very tight bound big omega is a tight bound this is greater than or equal to so to satisfy this you have to take the maximum power function of n which satisfy this inequality okay there is something called little omega
little omega in that case the the only difference is 0 and half this is equal to here this is a loose bound f of n is greater than c into g of n in that case you may write n or n square here that is no problem with that because this is a loose bound even if you are writing n here this will work if you are writing uh, n square and giving high value for low very low value for c this will be fine that is this should not be equal to but should always be greater than this so in this case even if c is equal to 1 this is strictly greater than this isn't it even if c is equal to 1 so n square plus 2 is strictly greater than n square no issues so everything else is the same so only difference is it should be strictly greater than not equal to okay that is only difference between little omega and uh, big omega that is uh, big omega is a tight bound little omega is a loose bound If this is greater than or equal to for uh, both big omega and greater than for little omega okay if you understand this every other complexity notation is very easy because all of them follow the almost same syntax so we will see big go next so i am changing making the changes to this particular definition so that you can easily learn the definition so i'm writing b o and the notation is the capital letter o f of n is equal to we will change this definition to k the f of n is equal to b go of g of n if there exists two positive constants c and n zero such that f of n less than or equal to c into g of n that's all the difference for all values of n greater than some n zero so i'm taking in f of n as 3 in square plus 2 and g of n as n square okay now this graph may change so i am deleting this parameters and we will modify it okay so if i want to write that 3 n square plus 2 is big o of n i should meet this condition that is 3 n square plus 2 should be less than or equal to c into g of n which is n square I'm taking the same example. So, um, I'm for C. I'm taking five. Any value you can take any positive constant. No issues at all. Three n square plus two is less than or equal to five n square. So when n is equal to one, this both of them are more equal. When n because this is three plus two five and this is five and n is equal to one. When n is equal to two, this is three into two six plus two eight and this is So when n is equal to two, this is twelve plus two fourteen, and this is equal to five into four twenty. Okay, so this is always smaller than this. This one is this side is always smaller than this. So you can take n as equal to n zero as one. So for all values of n greater than or equal to one, and when c is equal to five, this inequality holds. So I can say that three n square plus two is big O of n square. Okay. See so. Uh, the graph is same except for the labels of the functions. So see after n zero, f of n is less than c into g of n. That is, f of n is less than c into g of n. C into g of n is greater than f of n. See again, uh, semantically speaking, the meaning of this inequality is that. C into g of n is greater than or equal to f of n, isn't it? So that is C into g of n is giving you an upper bound on the complexity. So this says that your yeah, the maximum time the fun your function can take will not be beyond C into g of n. That is this is the worst case complexity. It speaks about the maximum time your algorithm can take. Okay. Similarly, as I told in the previous case, uh, you may feel that uh, even if you are writing n cube, n raised to four, or n even n raised to ten, this inequality will be always right. But again, you have to take the minimum function of n, the smallest power function of n that satisfies this inequality, and hence it is definitely n square. And we have the loose bound here also, which is Little o, little o denoted by 
small letter room little omega was denoted by w i don't remember whether i have put it right in the previous example so this is little omega and this this little o so the only difference is this f of n is strictly less than c into g of n so in this case um the inequality is uh, f of n is less than strictly less than c into g of n so you may take even n cube or n raised to 4 here because the only condition is f of n should be strictly less than c into g of n. that's a loose bound also okay so that is little o that's the only difference now we will see theta which gives you the average case complexity so theta notation again now uh, we will change the definition to theta so that you can easily learn it f of n is equal to theta into g of n if there exists two positive constants three positive constants c1 c2 and n0 such that f of n c1 into g of n less than or equal to f of n less than or equal to c2 into g of n for all values of n greater than some n0 okay that is you have two constants c1 and c2 on both sides of f of n to make that uh to make it more that so i'm taking f of n is 3n plus 2 as in the previous example and i'm taking g of n is n okay now what i want to do is if i want to say that f of n that is 3n plus 2 is theta of g of n that is g of n is n i want to find two constants some c1 into g of n into n less than or equal to f of n just the n is to less than or equal to c2 another constant into g of n now i want to get the values for c1 c2 and n okay so i'm taking c1 as it should be less than this so i'm taking c1 as some 1 1 into n less than or equal to 3n plus 2 Is then or equal to I'm taking c to us some five five into n. So I have taken c one as one and c to us five. Now c n less than or equal to three n plus two less than or equal to five n. If you are taking one, this is one n as one. This is one less than or equal to three plus two five less than or equal to five. Perfect. When you are taking two. This is two less than or equal to three n plus two is three into two six plus two eight less than or equal to five into two ten here. So this is perfect. So this inequality holds for all values of n greater than one. So that's it. It's a little difference. That is, it's a very tight bound. It gives you the average case complexity. And again, uh, talking about this curve, it can be. C1 G of n is less than or equal to f of n less than or equal to C2 into G of n. That's the only difference. That is, for all values of n greater than this n zero, this inequality is right. So this is obvious, right? Theta theta gives you the average case complexity of an algorithm. Hope you understood. Thank you.